everybody, it's Brandon here with Making Traditional. I thought I'd do a quick rundown on uh, where I harvest my primitive shaft. Um, ocean spray grows a lot uh, around our area here in the Northwest. Um, usually grows in little patches and clumps. So right here I've got this really sweet arrow snow. It all grows here on my in-laws property. Uh, ocean spray is pretty easy to locate, especially in the spring. But even in the fall and winter, you'll see the seed pods that all hang off of the branches. So that's a really good indicator uh, that it's ocean spray. Um, so let's take a look here. I'll show you the, kind of what I'm looking for when I'm looking for an arrow shaft. Um, we'll get one cut. All right, so I got a pretty nice shoot located here. Um, what we're looking for, for an arrow, um, I normally shoot Douglas fir arrows and they're around 11, 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm looking for something slightly over 11, 30 seconds um, on, the, on the point end. Um, so I try and find something roughly three feet long, fairly straight, um, and I've got a pretty good shoot located here. You're not looking for something that's super, super uh, fresh as far as a shoot. You want something that's a little bit more mature of a shoot. Um, so we've got this one located here. I'll go ahead and cut it off down at the base, uh, and then we'll pull it out and I'll cut it off around the three foot mark. Another thing that's really handy is to carry a, like an 11 30 seconds or a three-eighths box end wrench and use that box end wrench, the open end of it, um, to kind of gauge a diameter. That's really helpful to give you uh, more of a consistent um, arrow diameter. Granted, your spines are gonna vary, um, but let's get this cut and I'll show you what's going on. Our shoot cut off here, obviously way too long. I'm gonna go up as high as I can. This is roughly 36 inches or so. Uh, I'll end up with a 29 inch or so shaft is where I usually cut my so We'll get this scored and broken off. And what I'll do is I'll cut a couple dozen of these um, and bundle them all together and keep them in the garage. And by bundling them all together, it keeps them from warping. Um, so I got it scored here and we'll break it off and we'll replant this one. So there we go, we've got a, our, our primitive shaft, you can see it's not straight at all. And I can kind of do some uh, initial straightening, but as this dries, um, it'll actually hold its straightness. Um, but I'll just kind of go through and work on initial straightening before I bundle all the shafts together. Um, and then by doing that, they'll all kind of work against each other and stay fairly straight. And I'll let these dry for three, four months um, and then be able to start straightening them into shafts. And uh, you'll see that here next. So it's been a few months now, them drying in the garage, uh, in the dehumidified garage. So um, they've been drying fairly straight. I probably should have taken the bark off when they're green. Uh, so I'll fight it a little bit, but it should be a fun little project, make some primitive arrows. Stay tuned. All right, picking up where I left off with these ocean spray shafts. I got the dimensions all laid out. Um, it's like a 29 inch shaft. So I got them all marked, uh, cutting out any splits or checking that was on the ends of them. I'm gonna go ahead and get them cut here on the bandsaw, get them cut to length and then and start continuing on with the arrow process. So take a look. So as you can see, I've uh, debarked all of these shafts and then I've also went through the process of hand straightening them all. So I'm kind of picking up a little bit farther down the process than uh, I videoed, but uh, taking off the bark was just a matter of using a pocket knife and, and scraping all that bark and cambium layer off. And then the straightening process was over the, the last month or so, um, straightening them two or three times. And that's just uh, hand straightening uh, making sure to get all the kinks and bumps out um, and then letting them rest and then waiting another couple of weeks and straightening them again. Um, and in about two or three times, you can get them fairly straight. Um, you can also use heat and apply heat with either a heat gun or over a fire, uh, and that will help soften um, the shafts after they've dried. Um, and then you can adjust that straightness um, and fine tune um, any crooked spots. So these are these are straight now. I'm getting them all cut to length So I have a uniform shaft length and then we'll go ahead and start working on all of the 
um, knock tapers and the self knocks. So I start my knock with a handsaw uh, just to get it centered and started and then I'll finish it up with the files. And this is just a coping saw that I'm using. Um, gives you about the right diameter of a string. So I'm using this coping saw just to kind of clean out where the, the string knock needs to go and then I'll finish it up with a chainsaw file. If you didn't want to freehand these knocks, you could get what's called a nifty knocker. And it's a, a guide that lines up with your shaft and kind of has some slits in it to be able to run your files and coping saws in to give you that perfect uh, self knock every time. Yeah, I go down about a half of an inch um, and then I'll clean that up with a file. So now that the knock end of the shaft is complete, I'll work on the uh, hafting end of the shaft. So I'll create another uh, knock essentially where that broadhead's gonna sit. Um, and I'll end up fine tuning the depth of the uh, knock itself uh, once I get the points built. So I'm gonna make some trade points for these ocean spray arrows. So I've got uh, some steel strapping here. I've got my angle grinder. And I'm going to get some cut off and I'll show you here in video. So I'm going to use the 3 to 1 ratio here for broadhead length. So this is inch and a half wide. It'll end up probably be an inch and a quarter by the time I bevel the edges. I'm hoping I can get six out of this strap. scale kind of see where what my starting weight is and then we'll go ahead and put a bevel on
all ground to shape, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some side notches in them so that I'll be able to lash them onto those ocean spray shafts. notched let's throw them on the scale and see how heavy they are 268 grains that's pretty heavy hopefully uh, by beveling them I'll be able to take some weight off we'll see all right so uh, putting a beveled edge here on these broadheads just got a pair of vice grips um, and using my belt sander here it's putting a pretty good edge on it this is really mild steel so it, it uh, sands pretty easily I will go ahead and harden them when I'm done, but I'll show you how I do it. I'm looking for on this bevel is to just get past the halfway point in thickness so when I go to the other side of the belt sander I can meet in the middle um, and should have a nice bevel. sides here and bevel the other side and I'll repeat this process on all four of these broadheads let's heat treat them so using my torch I heated them up to red hot and then quenched them in some vegetable oil I used vegetable oil so that I could then uh, temper them in the oven uh, without the smell of motor oil in the house Put all these pieces together. So I have my self-knocked ocean spray shafts. Uh, they've been finished. Uh, I went ahead and fletched them and now I'm going to go ahead and wrap these fletchings with some um, sinew uh, to give it that primitive look. They, the fletchings have been glued on but I like the look of the sinew and it keeps the quill from uh, lifting up as it passes over either a shelf or a bare knuckle if you're shooting off of a self bow. So we'll get all these twisted up and then we'll do some shooting. I also got the trade points hafted on to the business end of these shafts. Uh, they're ready to go. All right, so we just finished up these ocean spray shafts this morning. I got some uh, steel trade points on there some turkey feathers from Josh over at Wild Fletching. Uh, these are self knocks and some artificial sinew. So let's, let's fling a few arrows and see how they shoot. I have a feeling they're gonna fly 
pretty sporadically. Um, three of them are actually within 20 or 25 grains, and I'm sure the spines are much different, but let's fling a few and I'll see. I'm about 10 yards here, just so if the spine is really off, I don't lose one. Points are like 220 grains, so they're definitely helping stabilize the, the shaft. Let's go see. Need some practice. I want to thank everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed this build process. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and make sure and like and subscribe. See you next time.